Oh, I'm not asking her eight questions? No, 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 no. Fabio has it already laid out for us. Okay. Yeah. You gotta make sure it look good. I should have I done some arms. I should have done some curls, huh? Before I got here, got my veins jacked up. I'm gonna go get Cannon out of school. Okay. Brightling Chronomatic 44. Well, mine's at A1735600M6501 or one or goner goner. My model, like business model? Uh, yeah, the super ocean. <laughs> I knew it was an ocean something and the first part's covered by the hour hand right now. Nine times out of 10, I'm still looking at my phone to see what time it is. I earned it. Cause I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's a Rolex. I don't care if it's a Casio watch from, from Walmart. Okay, if the best watches in the world are not the ones that you have to buy, but the ones that you get to put a lot of hard work into, and you get to earn them. I don't know. It's a chronometer. I do know it's the coolest and most expensive one that's been given out. <laughs> First thoughts when you've heard of the spit. Oh, this is a great question. Is I was like, I'm getting it. I can't miss out on this opportunity. I think because they've done a spiff before, but it wasn't for watches. It was for something else. Cash. They did it. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Maybe cash. it was for cash. But I remember Danny Klein got it, and it was that month that I didn't get it. And I'm like, the next time that there's ever a bonus, like I'm not going to be the one to lose out on that because I've got FOMO. So I think it's sure. important to know that at that time, now she was the third, fourth person to do it, right? I was the first, of course. I'll save that yeah. for later. 30 people, only five have hit the hit that spiff now. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty powerful that she was able to do that. Yeah, I was like, I'm not losing out on this. I'm not missing out on it. I have to, because I don't want to be that guy. You know, like 10 years later when we're all looking at the photo and you got the pictures of everybody that has one, I didn't want to be that person not in the picture and everybody else has yeah. one and I'm like lucked out. Yeah, because it's not on the table anymore. You can't, yeah. unless Andy and Jacqueline bring it back. You can hit the number, but you're not going to get the watch. It's exclusive. It was just, yeah, it was it's a exclusive. period of time you had to hit it. Yeah, mine was based on the company revenue. Massive, massive goal. And at first I was like, wow, that's gonna be really cool. Now I can do anything with this team and this company and with Andy and Jacqueline. And I went to war, I worked 20 hours a day every day that month. It was, that was special. Went in the, hitting that goal with the team because that was a team goal. I had to rely on the team to win. And that was special, man. That was amazing. There wasn't a spiff when I got it, or at least I don't remember there being one. I just remember a bunch of texts that last week of the month. Andy kept texting me, man, are you going to hit this? Are you going to hit that? Like, where are you at? Where are you at? And I'm like, dude, like, what the hell? I'm, I'm on my best month. I think we all knew something was stirring or a couple of them had been, had been given out before, but there was no, there was no set um, standard to it. And uh, yeah, then, uh, you know, the morning of that meeting, uh, a couple of days after the first or the beginning of the month, yeah, got one of the Breitlings. I'll, I'll tell you, like, when the watch spiff became real to me, right? Jonathan and Selena had won theirs and they won and I was very very proud of them but I knew inside that I should have I should have a watch as well you know Jonathan and Selena they did a great job they accomplished a goal they got the watch this was the beginning of the month and Andy announced he said hey no more around this is the last month I'm gonna offer the offer the spiff so if you want it you better go get it and I was sitting in that meeting and I was already feeling like damn like I deserve that shit. Like I need to go get it, you know? After seeing them get it, like I said, massively proud of them, but I knew deep down, I was like, dude, I, I deserve that watch, man. I've worked my ass off. I've come really close every single month. I'm just gonna kill it and go get it. That was when it became real to me. That's when I decided I was gonna get it, you know? Well, like any other salesperson out there, it is you hear the spiff and then you immediately go, I want that spiff. Sean always talks about there's two different types of salespeople. There's like the one call closer or like you pick up the phone and you close the deal or the second one is being a hunter. So I definitely had to turn into a hunter that month and I was just finding every little single thing that I possibly could. But you know, it's one of the best things that ever happened to me. Like all the pressure, the pressure is good. Okay, now ask it to Sean, ask it to Sean. I wanna hear Sean. I know Sean's. what you're made for. Focus and clarity for the team. The guys that run and gals that run on autopilot, you leave them alone. They're good at what they do. You give them some deals, you throw them some leads, they go close them, they're good to go. Complete structure and foundation of the company that kind of went to the side focused on the team individually pushed the team showed up early stayed late closed deals you know, make sure i'm getting into their crms you know closing things that they didn't even know were there you know closing deals for them and not even getting them involved it was nuts discipline. so it was yeah it was crazy but yeah it's gonna be the discipline the focus that you can in ensure i think that was the month that i really opened up and saw that i could do whatever the hell i want and if i believe in it enough that i'm able to achieve what i want and just, you know, having to work 90 hours a week is freaking stupid. If you could figure out how to do it in 30 hours a week, figure out how to do it in 30 hours a week and use those other 
40 hours a week to you know grow or work on the business versus you know just trying to put up revenue i had to change my belief and my perspective on you know who i am what i do and the clients that we serve but i didn't believe in myself to be able to solve bigger problems for bigger clients and bigger problems if you solve them there's obviously a bigger reward on the other end of it and so i had a hard time you know grasping that concept that hey listen you get better you believe better you know, you study, you go harder, and you solve bigger problems. You know, everything else in your life, you're gonna solve your biggest problem. I really like flipped a switch in my mind. Like I literally just said, it's so funny how we always tell people, you know what to do, you just need to do what you know. And I knew what to do the whole time to grow my business, and but I wasn't doing it. And in that moment when I got pissed off, I just flipped a switch and just started doing it overnight. <laughs> I woke up the next morning and started doing it. I was like, that's my watch I went home I wrote down five to ten things I needed to do differently waking up earlier making more calls connecting more going harder you know deeper connections and stuff and following up more and all these different things right just woke up the next day and started doing it you know what's so funny it's the power of momentum right like I started the next morning and I was not close to the goal at all but doing the actions when I didn't feel like it started to compound and I started to see that the goal was becoming real. And then once I knew, like once we got like midway through the month and I just had a massive day and I was like, F I'm about to hit the goal. I just freaking put my foot on the gas like no other. You know what's crazy is it this was the most hectic month that I've had in my entire Elliot career. My mom was flying in to visit me. We're going to Disneyland, so I had to cater to her plus leave early, plus going through a breakup, I, I, plus moving all in that on its own. So I wasn't like really living inside of my house. I was living in like an Airbnb. So I probably had the most amount of pressure actually. Yep. Yeah, my, yep. my breakup that I was going through. Definitely, definitely. But it's crazy because even though emotionally like I was going through all that, um, it just it, like I was in a painful spot that it just I used that fuel to, to go further and that was a really big roadblock. And then I'm plus mm -hmm. I'm moving at the same time. And then on top of that financially, I had to break my lease plus move into a new place that requires, you know, first month's last month's rent. Like I'm dealing with all the finances in my life too. Like it's almost like playing, I was playing chess that month, like moving all these little tiny pieces everywhere to making sure that they were, you know, fitting out properly. So that was a really big, big roadblock was, was my relationship. Yeah. I don't know if I had any roadblocks outside of my mind. Oh, that was such a good answer. Why do you always have the better answer, Sean? No, that was a great answer. Yeah, no, great answer. mine was the Anybody would say my answer. Sean, no, your answer is there. That. God, that's spicy. Yeah, just your mind. Your mind, your mind. You, that's a big number, Fabio. And it's a, we've never done anything like that or close to it to earn this bad boy. My mind, I had to tell, convince myself that we're going to hit this. So my roadblock would have been my mind. If I would have listened to my mind, we wouldn't hit it. For that month, dude, that month was freaking crazy. So that month was the first month that I started to get on stage myself. You know, I flew to Florida for two or three days. I had a training gig with the US Army. I spoke at an EXP real estate event. I spoke at a mastermind that month. Like, I think I was out of the office at my own event seven or eight days, which is a lot for me, but at the same time, growing who I am, I have to figure out how to, you know, grow the company and what I do and set my standards and at the same time, grow who I am as a character. And so at first I struggled with a lot of, I guess you would say, belief that I could hit the goal. And there was a couple of months where, you know, you watch other people get it, you know, and then there was a couple of months where nobody got one. And then you see, you know, there's two very important people who, who achieved it. It was Brendan and Ryan. And I just looked at myself, I go, you know what? Like they turned everything around simply because they believe that they can do it. And then it's funny, the literally next month that I watched Ryan get his, I go, there's no way in the world I'm not gonna get mine as well. And so it, it was one of those where I had to have a complete rebuild of the belief of who I am. And so once that belief changed and it has now been like solidified, everything else, it just kind of fell into place. I mean, dude, the major roadblocks are, then this is like applies to any goal that you're striving after, right? Just laziness. I would say those are the three demons that you, that you face. I was like, let me see the money. Let me make sure the money came through. Let me see the check green the check mark. Account. Let's see that. Yeah. yeah. The first thing that I said is I earned it. I earned it and I worked for every single 
damn penny that was on that line and that number, you know? And, and like, for me, it's just like, you know what? This feels so good. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Put that thing on my watch. I'm taking it right now. The box and all the strings that come with it yeah. and the tags. Nobody can take that away. Nobody can rob that yeah. feeling of you because you know that you did the required work to get there. I was thinking about what it's going to be like to open that watch in front of everybody and hit that goal. And I think that's why it was so emotional because you give a lot. Like December was emotional two years ago when I hit the goal for the first one to do uh, X amount of money in the company. That was a cash spiff. That was draining. That took a lot. And then I knew we were going to hit it after the third weekend because we came off the weekend, the third weekend of the month with a strong weekend tracking 200,000 over. And I've never, I've never, we've never as a team dipped 200 grand on in tracking mm -hmm. ever. So we're not going to, that's not going to happen. And then going in five, six days left in the month, we had it done it's yeah. locked up i just kept showing up closing and just whew. i'll i'll just stop and let you edit this and then cut mine in there just go ahead and show everybody there was no way i would have thought i would have broken down there's just no way i was so jacked up and then it hit and uh i can get emotional now you see the watch you get the watch because jacqueline offered me cash to hit the goal and I said, I'd like a watch because I don't buy nice watches for myself. I'm not a watch guy. I've never owned a nice watch. I mean, I'm cool. Just never had them. Yeah. So I said, instead of that <clears throat> X amount of dollars, I'd like a watch. And she says, done. Perfect. I'll get you a watch and I'll pick it out for you. I'm done. Great. This watch is irreplaceable. It's priceless. It was just cool, man. That's the biggest goal I've accomplished in my life financially. Financially, the biggest month I've ever had. The goal, the, the watch, the team win. Um, it brought us all closer together. And then... So it was just a special event. It was amazing. Yeah, the watch could be a dollar. It could be from the dollar store. It's not like how much they spent on it. It's what it represents. Yeah. You know? the haters online, they're like, oh, that's a brightly. I know. Like, Everybody is like, those are no, fake. They did it for the media. They have no clue what it means. I, I was surprised, but I also didn't 100% think I fully deserved it. And what was really, really cool is having that emotion where... I didn't actually think I was going to get called up because I didn't think I had brought my A game. And I think a lot of us get, you know, stuck in that, in that feeling of we're not always bringing our A game, but just being recognized for, you know, what I had done was kind of, was kind of big. It, it really connected on a deep, different level. So it, it was, it was unique. That morning I had no idea we were doing a Breitling spiff. I knew we had a meeting with Andy and Jacqueline, but they had been out of town for a while. So I'm like, okay, you know, they've been on the road for two or three weeks. Let's just you know, we're going to have a meeting. We're going to get fired up. We're going to reconnect with them, figure out where we're going. Well, that morning I had one of my clients, Bridger, who uh, hit me up the day before. He's like, hey, dude, you want to go get in the workout in the morning? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, what are you planning on working out? He's like, I don't know. Let's do legs, my man. And I'm like, Sh I don't do legs often. Like, I'm just not, not a huge fan of legs. I don't think anyone is. And dude, I, we went and tore it up. We, just, we destroyed our legs. I mean, just going home from the gym, I about tripped. Knew it was just going to be one of those days where I had done pushed my legs a little far, but I'll get through. So we're sitting in the meeting with Andy. Wasn't expected at the time. So he calls my name and I'm like, oh crap, I'm 100% sure my legs aren't working. So I try to just stand up and I make it about, I don't know, this far. And I notice, okay, my legs aren't getting me out of this damn chair. They are shot. So then I try to use my arms to push myself up, get to a standing position and just collapse. Nothing worked. Like I know everyone's watching and like what the hell's going on with this guy. You know, a lot of people say I was so surprised that my legs gave out, but that's because I was crushing legs that morning. No big deal. And I was just sitting there like my leg was just like shaking and bouncing. Like I was like so excited. I was able to give uh, a little bit of a speech. And I'm going to tell you this, there's very few times in my life where I've, I've cried, you know, like actual tears. And that was... That was one of those moments where I was very close. Like I had, I had a G up real quick, just pulled that sucker right back in. Cause if they would have let me keep on talking for another 20, 30 seconds, yeah, it would have been game over. Dude, you know what's so crazy? So nobody dislikes being recognized, right? Like, and, be, and you know, and having a good moment like that. But after receiving the watch, what I realized was that it really wasn't that much about the watch. Like the moment was cool, it came and went. But what stayed was the memory, and what stayed was the newfound identity. Just don't freaking quit. Like, don't quit, don't give up, and don't let society tell you who you are and what you have to be. It's easier to figure out how to make 40K a year and not achieve your dreams and just convince yourself you're happy and, you know, pay the bills. It's easier on the daily basis until it's not easier anymore. And typically, when it's not easier anymore, you're, you're too late in life. You're either in your 60s, 70s, you don't have the ability to switch jobs, or you're on your deathbed and you realize that you gave up on everything. If you just plug into your work, if you just focus on the task at hand and don't focus on how, like how tired you are, 
this will help anybody overcome anything. You know what I mean? The, the tiredness was just something I had to just decide. I don't get tired. Not this time. I don't get tired now. I can sleep at the end, not in the middle. If you just plug into your work, if you just focus on the task at hand and don't focus on how, like how tired you are, it goes away. Like you'll start to get immersed in what you're doing and just focus on the results for the day. That's all I do. When I'm tired and I feel like I just start dialing the phone and having conversations and sending messages. And you know what happens? I forget I'm tired. <laughs> you know, a lot of people just have different metrics of work ethic. But